and FileMaker Go, and Vin Adala, the product manager for FileMaker Web Direct. As a reminder, this presentation is presented under non-disclosure. By participating in today's webinar, you agree not to share this confidential information with anyone until permission is provided by FileMaker. Thank you for your, uh, for your compliance on this. I'd also like to point out that our product line is still under development. We will not be demoing for you today. Instead, we're going to share some highlights with you. Keep in mind that there is more work to do and things can change. Okay, now before we get started, I'd like to do some brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support. That's at 888-259-8414. Again, that number is 888-259-8414. During today's presentation, you'll have an opportunity to type in questions. Let's talk briefly about how to uh, enter a question. Just go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question, and click send. We'll cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. Okay, enough housekeeping. Let's get on to the presentation. I'd like to start by talking about our objectives for the FileMaker platform. These are longer term goals that don't change with every version. We know that you value FileMaker because of how productive you can be, you know, how quickly you can create and modify solutions. So we always start when looking at the future of FileMaker by asking ourselves how we can make you more productive, how we can make your development time more effective uh, and quicker. Businesses of all sizes continue to expand their use of mobile devices. And so we continue to invest in our mobile technology so that you can build great solutions for mobile devices and for touch interfaces. Now, we'll continue to lead with iOS, but ultimately, we'll cover a range of mobile scenarios, including the browser. Now, speaking of the browser, we've heard from you clearly. You want the full power of your FileMaker solutions in the browser. This is actually a challenging goal. You know, we all know that the internet and web browsers were not originally built for interactive applications. And the type of solutions you can build in FileMaker are quite powerful. But the browsers and the internet evolve, and we've made great strides with FileMaker Web Direct. There's definitely further to go, and this is definitely a multi-release effort. Today, your customers have very different expectations for your solutions. I mean, what your users are shaped by what they see in the app stores. They're shaped by the simplicity of mobile interfaces, uh, by new design paradigms, by new design, um, by new design um, look and feels. We want to give you the tools to be able to satisfy and delight today's users and the users of the future. Finally, we know that the solutions that you create cover many important business operations. And we know that you need the FileMaker platform to be secure, reliable, and to be able to scale. <clears throat> now, we work toward all of these objectives all the time, but we can't deliver everything all at once. So in each release, we focus on particular advancements. Let's take a look at what we're planning for the next version of FileMaker. Our enhancements fall into three broad categories, automation, design, and mobility. Now, automation is a word we don't use too often, but it's something that's essential to most of the solutions that you create. There's many parts to automation, but one part you probably use every day is scripting. We've not made too many changes over the years in scripting, except to add more scripts. But this changes in the next version of FileMaker. Using some concepts from higher end development systems, but, as we always do, making it easy and also respecting the ways that you already operate and the skills that you already have, we've been, uh, uh, invented an entirely new area to make you more productive. We call it the script workspace, and we think you're going to love it. In the area of design, we're delivering new tools and objects so that your solutions can better model the behaviors you see in today's applications, um, such as consistent application-wide navigation. We're also adding a launch center. This is a great visual way for you and your users to find solutions and to launch them. It works in a consistent way across the platform, 
whether you're doing clicks on a desktop or a touch on a mobile device. Now, speaking of mobile, we've designed a brand new iOS compatible UI for FileMaker Go. And we've been adding new scripts that will let you take more control of the behavior of your applications on iPad and iPhone. And, and this is one of our top requests, we're taking the browser mobile by extending FileMaker WebDirect uh, to add support for higher end mobile devices. Now there's a lot more coming. In fact, there are enhancements across the entire platform. So let's start with FileMaker Pro. Now to cover this area, I'd like to turn things over to Robert Holsley. Hey, take it away, Robert. All right, thanks, Ryan. I'm going to go ahead and get started with something I think a lot of you out there are going to be really excited about, and that's a brand new script workspace. Um, as Ryan mentioned, our goal here was really to transform your development experience when writing scripts. We want to make sure we're giving you the tools to be efficient and give you easier access to the information you need uh, to, write, to make the right choices. We wanted to create an environment that was both comfortable for new customers to our platform, as well as all of you out there that have highly developed scripting skills. One of our biggest enhancements is in the way that we're going to allow you to create and edit scripts. You know, for years you've been asking us to give you better options over controlling with the keyboard. Uh, so with the new script workspace, you're actually going to be able to keep your hands on the keyboard and edit scripts directly in line. This means you're not going to have your mouse traveling all over the screen as you're building scripts, and instead you can use uh, the, key, the arrow keys for navigation, uh, space or enter to select values, and tab to get easy access to things like script parameters and options. When it comes to adding new steps to your script, you're now going to be able to just type a few characters on a blank line and you're going to see a filtered list of all the relevant steps. You're even going to see a little description of what that script step does. And Once you've found the one that you need, you just hit enter and it's automatically added to your script. And then for even quicker access, we've got shortcuts such as GTRR, which is going to give you go to related record. And then once you combine those two, the auto enter and the shortcuts, you are going to be entering scripts faster than you ever thought was possible. Now, if you want to continue using the mouse as your primary entry tool, you're still going to have access to a list of all the script steps, just as you did before. But now we're going to have a very easy to use uh, search filter so that you can quickly find the script that you need. And while this screenshot uh, doesn't show it, you're actually going to have a little help window just like you did with the autocomplete at the bottom of the list. And that's going to have a direct link to the script steps uh, help topic so you can get all the information you need. Once you've found some scripts that you're using frequently or maybe one more obscure ones that you want easy access to, you're going to be able to favorite them so that they're always with an easy access right at the top of the list. Now we've done a lot of work to make the creation and edit of scripts easier, but we also wanted to make reading and consuming of scripts easier as well. So you can see here with the use of syntax coloring, I'm making things like comments and script flow stand out more. I've used blank lines to sort of break my script up into relevant sections. And then if I need to tell someone, hey, go look at a specific part of my script, I can now point them at a line number, making it really easy to reference. So with all these changes to the way that I enter, enter, edit, and read, we wanted to reassure you that all of your existing script organization that you're used to is still available to you. Um, so you're still going to have access to all of your scripts, uh, your folders, and your separators, just as you did before, but now they're going to be really easy to get to right within the script workspace. We've also made some refinements to the calculation dialog. Um, so you can see here we've got a brand new design for easier access to your fields and functions. You've also got a little uh, icon for each field showing you what their type is. And we've also included some of the enhancements from this script workspace, uh, such as uh, this autocomplete. And again, you can see here you've got a little description of what the script or the, the function is doing, so that you can keep your hands on the keyboard and very quickly write your functions. Okay, so this was just a quick overview of the brand new script workspace. There's a lot more there. Um, I touched on a few of the new features such as inline editing, autocomplete, and the ability to favorite script steps, all geared towards helping you be more efficient and really cut down on your development time. Now let's talk a little bit about some new uh, design tools. 
The first of which is button bars. Now button bars, you're going to easily be able to create a group of button segments. And these bars are going to be perfect for navigation or as uh, custom toolbars. So when you think about creating navigation today, you have to create a series of unrelated buttons, which means that they're not going to be able to resize properly when you uh, try to anchor them all. Uh, there's no way to calculate the labels, um, and you have to manually build in some conditional formatting or go to each layout to uh, change the color values. Uh, but with button bars, we really solved all that. Uh, they're extremely versatile, so you're going to be able to display them horizontally or vertically. And um, when you resize the window, they're automatically going to maintain equal proportions. And right, right within the new button setup HUD, you're going to be able to take your label and specify that by a calculation for the first time. Uh, you're going to be able to easily specify which of the segments are active just using a drop down or using a calculation for more advanced cases. And then you can even specify whether the button segment performs an action such as a script or a script step or change it to a button, uh, or I'm sorry, a popover. So you can really mix and match those two types right within one button bar. And to those button bars, as well as our existing button objects, you're now going to be able to add button icons. Uh, so these button icons, you're going to be able to choose from 140 professionally designed uh, button icons that cover a whole wide variety of tasks. And you're going to be able to color those, um, add conditional formatting, and then if you don't find the exact one you want, you can always import uh, your custom icons. Now, once you've got a button bar all set up for the solutions navigation, it's going to feel right at home in our brand new navigation parts. These parts are going to behave more like an application's toolbar in that they're going to ignore zooming, uh, and they're also going to remain static on your layout at the top or bottom, uh, so that when your user is scrolling and navigating around your solution, you can be assured that they're always going to have easy access to the navigation so that they never get lost. So there was a few uh, new tools, but we've also made enhancements to existing tools. You're not going to be able to simplify your layouts by adding placeholder text or instructions directly inside of a field. And when you're in browse mode and you start typing that, inf that uh, instructional text is instantly going to disappear. This means no more doing tricks like stacking objects or using conditional formatting. It's really going to be great for providing some temporary information to your users without cluttering your layouts. And now for all of us out there that have struggled with finding just the right color for our layout, we've also enhanced our color palette to display colors that coordinate with your current theme. So it's really easy to create attractive layouts. You can see here that I've got colors that uh, will look really good with the theme that I've already picked. And then if you find a color on the web uh, or you want to match that exact shade of blue in your company logo, you're not going to have the option to either use our sample tool and sample the color right from the screen, or if you know a text value, you can just paste that directly into the color palette. We're also giving, giving you more and more control over layout objects. Uh, this is something that we've been requested, we've heard a lot of requests for ever since we introduced our new design surface. Um, we're going to give you the ability to control the color of icons for control, control styles, <clears throat> such as pop-up menus, drop-down lists, and date, uh, date fields. We're also going to allow you to uh, either display a check mark or an X in the checkbox set. And as layouts are becoming more and more complex, it's really important that we're providing you the information you need as quickly and easily as possible. So you can see here we've enhanced the layout badges to now include tooltips of what the badge is indicating. For example, I've got a button here that will programmatically show or hide uh, depending on certain criteria. And instead of having to go looking through the inspector trying to figure out what that is, I can just hover my mouse over the badge and I see a tooltip of exactly what the programmatic visibility calculation is. Um, okay, so as Ryan mentioned earlier, we've also got a brand new launch center that you're going to see when you first launch FileMaker as well as if you go to File Open. And this is really going to help you visually organize your FileMaker solution so that it's really easy to find the one you're looking for. And right within the file options, you're actually going to be able to choose from a, uh, over 30 attractive pre-built uh, icons to represent your solution. Or if you choose, you can import your own and, and really give that solution, um, really associate it with your company. You can use a company logo, uh, or you can make it stand out and distinguish it from all the other solutions that your users may be using. Again, as Ryan mentioned, the Launch Center is going to be uh, uh, included in the entire FileMaker platform. 
So whether your users are coming in through FileMaker Pro on Windows or Mac, uh, launching FileMaker Go on the iPad or iPhone, or connecting through a browser for FileMaker WebDirect, they're going to get a very consistent uh, look and feel. Now, as most of, most of you know, uh, every copy of FileMaker Pro ships with 16 starter solutions. Uh, with this release, we've uh, updated them so that they all include layouts uh, tailored specifically for FileMaker WebDirect, in addition to the desktop and iOS layouts that you're used to. We've also um, completely redesigned two of our more popular solutions. So here you can see projects as well as event management. They're both going to have a clean new look and a much simpler workflow. All right, uh, just a quick summary of, of what we went over here with the new design tools. Uh, you think, saw things such as the new button bar, which again is great for solution navigation and pair perfectly with our navigation parts, as well as some enhancements to existing tools such as the uh, inline placeholder text and our, our color palette, which is now really going to help you identify the best colors for your layout. Now I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about FileMaker Go. Our focus with this release was really to give you more control over your iOS experience and to also improve our user interface to really help you and your customers uh, be more productive on the go. It's, FileMaker Go is going to have a brand new look that reflects the style of iOS 8 and give your users a real consistent experience. We've done a lot of work to match uh, Apple's UI guidelines such as you'll see here at the top we've increased the size of the toolbar to give you better tap targets. We've also moved common tasks uh, into places that your iOS users will have come to expect, such as the find options being in the top right-hand corner. And then we've even made it really easy for you to take your solution full screen. Um, you can use a three-finger swipe gesture, or for developers, you can use a couple of easy script steps so that your solution takes up the full real estate of the screen, really gives it a, a native iOS feel. Now, as far as scripting, uh, we've got a few more uh, or a few additions that will give you a lot more control, such as being able to lock the orientation, meaning that I can build layouts specifically for um, portrait or landscape views to ensure that the customer really sees exactly uh, sees it exactly the way that you intended. And all you have to do is specify which of the orientation you wish to allow. We've made some enhancements to the um, signature capture so that you can now display things such as a title or a description, really give the person signing an understanding of what they're agreeing to. We, we've actually also removed the restriction that uh, the signature capture screen is always in landscape. Uh, now you'll be in control of which orientation it displays. So if you've got a form that a long form that the user is filling out, they no longer have to turn the device at the end to sign. With a brand new, very simple script step, you're going to be able to finally control the iOS uh, touch keyboard. And so this is really perfect for those times where you want to guide the customer experience um, and not have them distracted by a keyboard sliding up or down. And as a bit of a side note, while this part of the conversation is about FileMaker Go, this particular script step is also going to work for FileMaker Pro on Windows um, touch devices such as the Surface uh, Pro. Now for containers with this release, we've done a lot. Uh, so the first thing is containers will now have the ability to display inline. This means that I'm going to be able to watch a video and continue, continue interacting with the rest of my layout. This is great for training solutions where you want the user to watch some video and then take notes directly in the same database at the same time. We're going to give you much, much more control over the playback of audio and video files as well. So there's three new AV player related script steps. They're going to allow you to do things such as play, stop, and pause videos. You're even going to be able to automate exact uh, starting and stopping points of a video. Uh, this means that you'll be able to script uh, the viewing of a certain part of a video. So if I want to have a coworker go and review a section of a video, uh, instead of them needing to manually scrub to that starting point, they can just run a script and it'll take them there immediately. We've also got three new triggers uh, so that you could run a script, for example, as soon as someone stops playback. You could set a flag uh, to ensure that they actually watched the entire video as opposed to just saying they did. And then we've also got a brand new calculation function that will give you a whole wealth of uh, information about the AV player, such as what triggered the event, the current state, and what the source type is. 
So as you can see, between those scripts, triggers, and calculations, you're going to have a lot more control over containers in FileMaker Go. And then finally, this is something that with no additional work from your part, all of your users are now going to be able to do rich text editing. And this is something that we know you've been asking for a, a long time. Your users are going to be able to choose the style, color, font, um, and even the style of the text, including bold, underlined, and italics. So the next time you have uh, some data that you really want to stand out, you can just select it, make it really large, make it red and bold, and that will assure that no one else will miss it when they come to that record. All right, so that was a quick overview of some of the new features in FileMaker Go. Uh, you saw the brand new, easy to use interface in, uh, uh, that is styled after iOS 8, as well as a, new, a few of the new control options, such as locking orientation, scripted container playback, and the ability or, to uh, enable or disable the on-screen keyboard. I really hope you're excited about all the things you saw for FileMaker Pro and Go. I know I am. I can't wait to get it in your hands, uh, but at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Vin to talk to you a bit about FileMaker Server and FileMaker WebDirect. Thanks a lot, Robert. Um, yeah, as, as Robert said, I'll be talking about FileMaker WebDirect and FileMaker Server, but before I do that, just a quick uh, housekeeping note. Um, the questions that you guys are submitting through WebEx, we will address them towards the end of my presentation. There will be a section for Q&A, so Please do continue to submit those. All right, so let's get moving. Um, let's start. Let's start with uh, FileMaker WebDirect, which is a very integral and very important part of our flat platform. And it's actually, uh, you know, the newest member of our platform. We first introduced it in FileMaker 13. And for the, those of you not familiar with uh, WebDirect, it allows you to bring your FileMaker experience to the web without you having to know any web uh, coding skills utilizing JavaScript or CSS or HTML. We're very proud of this technology and we want to continue to enhance it. And today I'm here to talk about what kind of enhancements uh, you can expect for WebDirect in, in the upcoming release. So one of the things that we hear very, very commonly uh, is that we, you know, people want WebDirect to be running on mobile devices. Mobile devices are everywhere. We have an amazing story with FileMaker Go on the iOS. But there are other uh, very popular mobile devices as well. So what we did with WebDirect in this release is looked at what it means for WebDirect to be on a mobile device, not only from a visual UI perspective, but also uh, changes that had to be made under the hood to make WebDirect work on mobile devices. On mobile devices, we know we have less hardware uh, capabilities. We have a sm uh, less RAM. We have a slower CPU. But we know we don't want poor and slow experiencing uh, poor and slow web direct experience. So we enhance all those things. Here you can see a quick screenshot of uh, FileMaker web direct uh, running in Safari on the latest Apple uh, iPad. You may already start noticing some differences here. Uh, first and foremost is that there's a completely new look to the toolbar. So we fundamentally sat down and discussed what it means for WebDirect to be on a mobile device. On a mobile device, we know the interaction model is the finger. Uh, you use the finger to, to, to tap on things. We know that the screen sizes vary from phone to, uh, to, to the pad devices. And we didn't want you guys to worry about any of these things. So we came up with a completely new design uh, to help meet these challenges that we need to solve for the mobile device. So one area that went through uh, a complete redesign is the toolbar. So here you can see the new WebDirect toolbar. This is shown at uh, full scale on an iPad. So on an iPad, it pretty much can show all the icons. You know, nothing is hidden. Uh, there's enough real estate to show everything. I'm sorry, this is shown on the desktop device. Uh, and then when you move to the iPad, what will happen is that uh, you can see here on the left side, we've got kind of the iPad version, and then on the right side we have the iPhone version. So what we do is we rearrange the tools and the toolbar and the menu items automatically and group them such that all the options are available to, available to you in logical uh, sections. So just because you're on a smaller device like an iPhone, you don't lose out on any feature set. You get all the full capabilities that you would have uh, had you use it on an iPad or on a desktop. And we do this through the uh, very common responsive design patterns. So this toolbar is also uh, 
also easily tappable. We know that you use finger to tap on these icons, so we made these tap targets large enough such that you can use them on both iPhones and iPads. And this, this toolbar, it automatically adapts to the screen size of your desktop or your mobile device. So using WebDirect is going to be very, very easy on these devices. To bring WebDirect to, um, to, to the mobile devices, we had to make a lot of under the hood changes to improve performance. However, these uh, performance improvements and these under the hood improvements not only helped us get WebDirect onto mobile devices, but it also creates a better uh, experience, WebDirect experience on your desktop devices as well. These are things like if you're using um, a Chrome or Safari on you know, um, Windows and Mac, well, you know, these are going to improve as well. How are they going to improve? First and foremost is that uh, we've improved the layout rendering speeds. So you'll see these sorts of speed improvements as you're generally using the application. You know, when you open the database for the first time, how long it takes to show the first layout after you open the database from the new launch center. Well, that's going to be faster. What about when you switch from layout A to layout B? That is related to layout rendering, right? So that's switching the layouts is going to be faster. Editing on a layout is going to be faster as well. So across the board, you're going to see improvements in the application. Also, as a result of the under the hood changes, we've been able to increase the number of concurrent connections that WebDirect can support. And in addition to that, on FileMaker Server, we've reduced the hardware requirements for FileMaker Server and FileMaker WebDirect. So you can now actually run more concurrent users with less, uh, less powerful hardware. So next, um, just to give you a quick summary of what I showed you, you know, we spent a lot of time bringing FileMaker WebDirect to mobile devices. This includes both the UI and heavy, heavy, heavy under the hood changes to bring performance that we would expect for mobile devices. We re redesigned the toolbar, and as a result of this, we've been able to take the work and bring performance and scalability enhancements to WebDirect across the board. So next, what I'm going to cover quickly is, um, is FileMaker Server. We consider FileMaker Server to be the, the central hub, the key uh, that holds all the platform together. FileMaker Server allows you to take a solution and publish it to hundreds of users via Go or Pro or FileMaker uh, Pro Advanced or through WebDirect, uh, uh, through WebDirect. So let me just talk to you a little bit about the enhancements that we've got, uh, we've got coming for FileMaker Server. So FileMaker Server, we love to focus on security, scalability, and performance. So let's talk about what happens uh, in, the, in the area of um, stability. So in the past, what would happen is if FileMaker Server, uh, for some reason, lost connection with its host, uh, with its client, so maybe through a network error or through some sort of a system issue, the users in the past, what they would have seen is they would have just been disconnected from the server. They would have lost their place in the solution. And when the server comes back up, the user would have had to re-authenticate, log in, and return to exactly where they left off before they got disconnected. What we're going to be introducing is an ability to automatically reconnect to FileMaker server. And what will happen with this feature is that FileMaker Pro will try to reconnect to the server for some period of time. If it's able to automatically reconnect, great. You're going to pick up where you left off, and you're not going to lose your place. But if for some reason we're not able to do this automatic reconnect, you now get this dialog that allows the user to reconnect or close the file if they choose to. And if they close the file, they'll have to come back later and reconnect. So this allows people to not lose their place and not lose their work. The next area that's very important to us on the FileMaker platform is security. So one thing that we added in the uh, unified um, admin console is a password strength indicator. So now when you set the UAC password using a certain algorithm that we wrote, it'll tell you whether the password you set is strong or weak. We've extended this feature into FileMaker Pro as well. So you'll be able to use this uh, feature in FileMaker Pro too. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, a feature called Standby Server. And what Standby Server is, is a feature that allows you to switch to a Standby Server if for any reason the primary server goes down. So the setup is that you have a primary server, 
And this primary server is a server where your users are currently connected. It's where you're currently hosting all the files. Uh, this could be uh, you know, your main database that all your users are connected to something you're hosting FileMaker WebDirect off of. And you have a standby server, which pretty much mirrors the FileMaker server in terms of its hardware requirements and its configuration. And in FileMaker 11, uh, we uh, introduced the ability to split up all your components into its own processes so you don't have a single point of failure. And in FileMaker 12, we, uh, uh, we uh, implemented the incremental uh, backup technology. So using this incremental backup technology, what we do is we are always syncing the data between the primary and the standby server. So the standby always has a snapshot of the data from the primary server, and it's also mimicking the hardware of the primary server. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible that if something uh, happens to the primary server where it goes down, then you can easily uh, switch over to uh, convert the primary uh, standby to the primary. So what are some reasons the primary can go down? There could be a loss in the network. There could be a crash on the primary server. There could be a hard disk failure. There could be a number of reasons why the primary goes down. And the way that you switch a standby to a primary is that you need to use a command line interface. So this is an advanced feature that's meant to be used only through the command line interface. Here you can see uh, a quick um, uh, um, UI of what this command line interface looks like. Here you can see uh, that we issued the standby command, which converts the standby to the primary server. So what does the client see? What does the client in FileMaker Pro see? Well, in the past, as I've told you, they would just see this uh, communication with the host was interrupted dialog, and all they get is an OK button. And if they hit the OK button, uh, the solution will close, and they lost their place. Well, we've been able to enhance the features to utilize the reconnect dialog. So now you get a host was interrupted. Does the user want to reconnect? Again, if they hit reconnect, they, let, they, they pick up exactly where they left off. So the server has switched from standby to a new primary server, and the user is given a option to automatically reconnect to the new, standby, uh, new primary server, which used to be the standby server. So quick uh, overview of what you saw in FileMaker Server. You saw the reconnect to server feature. You saw the security enhancements um, that are also available in FileMaker Pro. And then you saw the standby server feature. Next, I'm going to quickly talk to you guys about the targeted operating systems. And the reason this is important is because we want to give you guys a, a heads up on um, what operating systems we're targeting so you can properly plan your deployments. So, for FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Pro Advanced, uh, OS 10, Yosemite 10.10, .10 and Mavericks 10.9, Windows 8.1 Standard, Windows 8, and, and Windows 8, and of course, uh, Windows 7 SP1. For FileMaker Go, you need to be using iOS devices, of course, running iOS 8.1 or later. These still support uh, iPad, iPad minis, iPhones, and iPod Touch. For FileMaker Server, the Yosemite 10.10, .10, Mavericks 10.9, and FileMaker uh, 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 Windows Server 2012 R2 and Windows Server 2008 R2 are supported. And for WebDirect, we want you to be using the latest and greatest uh, web browsers. So on the desktop side, uh, you need to be on Safari 8.1 now or greater, and IE 10 or 11, and Chrome 38 or later. And what you've all been waiting for, mobile browsers, Safari, um, Safari 8.x on iOS 8.1, and Chrome 38 or later on Android 4.4, uh, which is the KitKat version of Android. And so just to give you a quick overview of what we covered, you know, Robert, myself, and Orion, we covered the scripting workspace. You saw some amazing new design tools with the button bar, and you saw all the work that went into enhancing mobile support, not only for FileMaker Go, but WebDirect as well. And of course, you're going to really enjoy the new performance enhancements uh, put into WebDirect. So you saw this and a lot more, and of course, there's more that we couldn't share. 
And we're hoping that all of this uh, meets the objectives that Ryan set out for us earlier, where we want to provide you with a platform that allows for rapid and low-cost development and provides incredible touch and mobility support and along with uh, allow, giving you technologies to deliver your applications on the modern browsers. So with that, we're going to turn to Q&A, and I'll hand it to Ryan for the first set of questions. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate that. Thanks, Robert. Um, all right, you guys. Um, uh, we have, by the way, very good attendance today, good turnout. Thanks. I, I see you're all very enthusiastic, and we're getting lots of questions in, so we'll get right to them. Um, I'll handle a couple here. Um, one question would be, um, will FileMaker Go be uh, um, ported to other platforms such as Windows Surface or Android? Uh, no, that's not in our roadmap. We're, we're focusing our um, installable app um, um, de development on iOS, but as you can tell, we're making a significant effort to bring support to mobile browsers through FileMaker WebDirect. Another question is, will the standby server require a separate license? Actually, no. Uh, we're going to bundle that in with uh, a FileMaker server. That means that you can get a server and then deploy a, a, a standby server. I want to emphasize that's for standby purposes. That's not the ability to have two production servers, but you will not need a separate license. Um, here's another question around WebDirect. How many current, concurrent connections will you support on WebDirect? Uh, today, the limit is 50. Uh, we intend to raise that limit. Um, it, it, it's going up in the next version. Um, don't have an exact number yet, probably in the range of 100. Uh, we'll, 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 um, we'll see how that goes when we launch, but that's, it's definitely going up, and 100 seems fairly likely. Um, actually, here's another web direct question, which I'm going to turn over to Vin. Yeah, so I think uh, the question here is uh, how many concurrent connections on WebDirect? Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. oh yeah. <laughs> uh, will be WebDirect have better text rendering? Yep, so WebDirect will have better text rendering. We uh, fixed a lot, of, um, a lot of bugs in the areas of, uh, you know, padding and the areas of positioning that I know people have had issues with. Um, so we've definitely done uh, lots and lots of bug fixing around that area. So you should definitely see improvements there. Go ahead, Robert. You got a few there. Yeah, I've got a, a quite a few for uh, script workspace. Uh, the first of which was, uh, can this new can you have multiple windows in the new script workspace? So absolutely. Uh, if you want to compare two scripts, you can just uh, right click on them and say open a new window. Uh, we've also got the tab so that you can quickly switch between uh, scripts that you're working on. Um, I've also got a few questions here on things that the new script workspace doesn't support quite yet, but I did want you to understand that we hear you and are well aware of these, such as the ability to copy and paste from a text edit um, or the ability to search for a phrase within the script workspace or, or to do a find and replace. These are all things that we're you know, investigating and looking at, but the current um, or the, the next version with script workspace will not support that. Um, I've got some for Launch Center. Uh, so the question was, uh, does Launch Center, is Launch Center shared among all users or is it a per user feature? Um, and sort of rela related, there's a question about can I customize the Launch Center as a developer? Um, so the Launch Center is really about the individual user, um, me as the end user about picking the solutions that are important to me um, and which ones and you know, where I want to organize them so that they make the most sense for me. So it's really a, a, an end user feature. Uh, we had a couple for button bar. Uh, so for besides button bar, will other uh, objects resize within the layout? Um, so we're not introducing anything new for other objects, but of course you can continue to use the auto resizing and anchoring uh, for other objects. You just select the object and within the inspector select which side you want it to anchor by. Um, and then there was another question about button bars and whether they will respect the screen orientation. And they absolutely will. So if I have a button bar and I set it to be full uh, width of the screen and then I rotate the device, it is going to um, equally and proportionally resize the segments to look appropriate. Uh, I have here a question about the color picker. Um, and it was around the fact, uh, or around the uh, matching the themes and whether it only uh, applies to the built-in themes or custom themes. Um, so the way that this will work is it's going to show you a list of um, colors that are picked right from that theme, whatever that theme is, whether it's one of your custom themes 
or one of our pre-built ones. Um, if you find another color that you really like, you'll actually be able to drag that into that area and it will give you the color that you picked as well as two complementary um, lighter and darker versions of the color as well. Uh, I've also got here a question about uh, compatibility. Um, so will the next version uh, be compatible with BombMaker 12 and 13? Uh, so there's no file format change, so you will be able to connect the clients uh, to uh, previous versions of server, but of course for um, the best uh, the best experience, we always try to keep them on the latest versions. Um, yeah, just a, a comment there. There, 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 could, there will be some limitations with regards to FileMaker Go's ability to connect back to prior servers. So this is Ryan here. So just uh, in particular, uh, we're, we're limiting FileMaker Go's ability to connect only to, uh, I think, uh, the latest server. Is that correct? Server 13, yes. Uh, and so, um, uh, but other than that, I think the key question there was, is there going to be a file format change? And the answer is, no, there's not. You'll be able to, to move your files around and, and, um, and be able to open them um, pretty easily. Uh, and then the final question I have before I turn it over to Vin um, is about FileMaker Go and whether whether it will be optimized for the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Uh, yes, and it'll it'll look good on on both the the newer uh, larger devices as well as the uh, 5s or the 5c. Um, and, and I also wanted to point out we've made with the last update to FileMaker Go 13 uh, the ability for it to uh, scale appropriately for those uh, iPhone 6 and 6 Plus devices. All right, turn it over to Vin. All right, thanks a lot. So I've got a few um, web direct questions here and a few server questions. So I'll run through the web direct ones first. So <clears throat> question here is, can web direct run a script from a URL like FMP or FMGo? Uh, we know this is a very, very common request. You know, when we remove the URL parameters, uh, people wanted to see that sort of functionality back in one way or another. And yes, we do. Uh, we will uh, bring that back and actually the new implementation for running scripts from a URL is heavily based and uh, on the FMP URL. So if you're familiar with how the FMP URL is set up and how you pass script names and script parameters through FMP URL, you can use that exact same syntax um, in, in WebDirect. Obviously, when, when the product comes out, you'll know exactly what that syntax is going to look like. So the answer is yes. The next question is, does WebDirect work on Firefox? It works on Firefox, but is it supported by FileMaker officially on Firefox? The answer is no. So WebDirect is built on um, you know, the standards of HTML5 and uh, CSS3. So we've always taken the stance that you know, we don't block browsers that we don't officially support because they should work. But of course, it's not um, recommended and it's not officially supported by FileMaker. So go ahead and you know, make sure you test on Firefox first. Is PHP still supported? Yep, we have not uh, removed any technologies in this release um, in, for custom web publishing, so you still have access to PHP and XML. Will rich text be supported in WebDirect? So yeah, rich text is a feature that just came to go, uh, which Robert showed. Unfortunately, it is not supported in WebDirect. You will not be able to um, edit and add rich text. I mean, you will be able to view rich text uh, data, but you won't be able to edit it. If you edit it, it's going to remove the formatting just like it did in 13. Uh, now, a few questions about um, server standby. The question is, how does one switch from main server to standby if main server is unintentionally shut down? Unfortunately, you will not be able to do that. This is not a automatic uh, 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 switchover. So as I mentioned in the UI, you need to have access to the command line interface. And it's an advanced user feature. So the user will need to have access to the main server to switch it from the primary to the secondary server, to the standby server. Will standby server run on VMs? Yes, it can run on VMs. And in fact, uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier is how the configurations of the standby and the primary should match. And of course, if you have a VM, you're more likely to match because you're just going to duplicate the VM. You're just going to duplicate the primary VM and make it the standby. So it's actually a, probably a little bit easier to do it on, on, a, on a VM. Will standby server work on a two machine deployment? Uh, it's not planned for, uh, for this release. Right now, it's only for uh, one machine deployments. Can standby server be in a remote location? 
it definitely can be in a remote location, but there's uh, definitely a bit of setup that you need to do. You need to make sure that the proper firewall holes are punched. You need to make sure that the IP address of the remote location is properly available. You need to make sure that the network connection between the primary and the standby server are robust. So there's definitely a number of things that you need to do and think about uh, to, to be able to set this up. So it is possible, but it's definitely uh, for the advanced users. And that's, that's all I have. I'm gonna Robert, I think you've got another question here. I sure do. Uh, so the question is, will the new FileMaker support 64-bit? Uh, so as you know, we, we uh, updated the server the last round to support 64-bit. And with this next release, both FileMaker Go as well as FileMaker Pro will support 64-bit. Uh, but we will also, for the Pro side, uh, also have a 32-bit version uh, for Windows, for example, so that you can install both if you still have plugins uh, that require 32-bit. Uh, but the next version will have a 64-bit version for everything on our platform. Okay, here, I, I think we're just going to do one last question. I like the question, though, which is when will the pre-release be available? I'm going to assume from that question that you're excited about uh, this technology and that you'd love to get your hands on it, and we'd love to, to give it to you. Um, however, um, we're still working on this. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a date, and the reason uh, is you know, we want to make sure that we, we uh, complete our work, that we have uh, high quality uh, software that we're going to deliver to you. So um, we have no data at this time, and I just want to emphasize there is some work remaining to complete this. The, the other thing that I'll just remind you again in closing is we really love the fact that, you know, we had excellent turnout today. We're, we're excited to share this with you. You, you guys are really um, uh, among our very best and um, uh, most valued customers. And um, so we share this information with you, but please keep it confidential so that we can continue to do this. This is all being presented under non-disclosure. Okay, well, well, we'll certainly be back with you again at some point discussing more about, um, about all this technology. But for today, and on behalf of uh, myself and the product management team, including Robert and Vin, I would really like to say uh, thank you, and this concludes today's webinar.